Prologue Seeking Allah I lay prostrate in a large Muslim prayer hall, broken before God. The edifice of my worldview, all I had ever known, had slowly been dismantled over the past few years. On this day, my world came crashing down. I lay in ruin, seeking Allah. Fading footsteps echoed through the halls of the mosque as the humid summer evening drew to a close. The other worshippers were heading back to their homes and families for the night, but my thoughts were still racing. Every fiber of my being wrestled with itself. With my forehead pressed into the ground and heart pounding in my chest, my mind scrutinized each word my lips whispered into the musty carpet. These were not new words. I had been taught to recite this Arabic phrase 132 times, every single day, from a time before I even knew my name. It was the Sajda, the portion of the ritual prayers in which Muslims lower themselves before Allah, glorifying His loftiness. The words had always flowed with ease, but this day was different. As my lips exercised their rote rituals, my mind questioned everything I thought I knew about God. Subhana Rabbi Al Allah. Glorified is my Lord, the Highest. Glorified is my Lord. Who is my Lord? Who are you, Lord? Are you Allah, the God of my father and forefathers? Are you the God I have always worshipped? The God my family has always worshipped? Surely you are the one who sent Muhammad I as the final messenger for mankind and the Quran as our guide. You are Allah, the God of Islam, aren't you? Or are you? I hesitated, fighting the blasphemy I was about to propose. But what if the blasphemy was the truth? Or are you Jesus? My heart froze, as if indignant at my mind for risking hell. Allah, I would never say that a man became equal to you. Please forgive me and have mercy on me if that's what I said, because that's not what I mean. No man is equal to you. You are infinitely greater than all of creation. Everything bows down before you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala point two. No, what I mean to say is that you, O oh Allah, are all powerful. Surely you can enter into creation if you choose. Did you enter into this world? Did you become a man? And was that man Jesus? O oh Allah, the Bible couldn't be right, could it? As if on parallel timelines, my lips continued to pray in sajda while my mind relentlessly fought with itself. The Arabic phrase was to be recited twice more before the sajda would be complete. Subhana Rabbi Al Allah. Glorified is my Lord, the Highest. But how is it conceivable that Allah, the Highest Being of all, would enter into this world? This world is filthy and sinful, no place for the one who deserves all glory and all praise. And how could I even begin to suggest that God, the magnificent and splendid creator, would enter into this world through the birth canal of a girl? Audit Hubila 3 that's disgusting. To have to eat, to grow fatigued, and to sweat and spill blood and to be finally nailed to a cross. I cannot believe this. God deserves infinitely more. His majesty is far greater than this. But what if His majesty is not as important to Him as His children are? Subhana Rabbi Al Allah. Glorified is my Lord, the Highest. Of course we are important to Him. But Allah does not need to die in order to forgive us. Allah is all-powerful, and He can easily forgive us if He chooses. He is Al-Ghafar and Ar-Rahim, 
for his forgiveness flows from his very being. What does coming into this world to die on a cross have to do with my sins? It doesn't even make sense for Allah to die on the cross. If he died, who was ruling the universe? Subhanallah 5 he cannot die. That is part of his glory. There is no need for these charades. He can simply forgive from his throne. But how can Allah be just if he simply forgives arbitrarily? God is not arbitrary. He is absolutely just. How would he be just if he forgave arbitrarily? No, he cannot just forgive us if he chooses. The penalty for my sins must be paid. Rising from the ground and sitting on my heels, I recited the Takbir. Allahu Akbar. God is great. God, I know that you are great in reality, but some of what the Holy Quran teaches is far from great. I am having a very difficult time understanding it, Allah. Please, have mercy on me. I don't mean to doubt you, and I ask for your mercy on my lack of knowledge and understanding. Please, Allah, may all this doubt not anger you. I must have misunderstood something, but there's no way you, being good and loving, would have given some of the commands found in the Quran. I have found so much violence and contempt in its pages, the pages of a book I have read and loved every day because it is your word. But maybe you are showing me that the Quran is not your word after all. So much of what I've been taught about it has turned out to be false. I was taught that it has never been changed, but hadith and history show that it has. I was taught that it has supernatural knowledge of science and the future, but when I asked you to help me see it with my own eyes, I could find none. So much that I thought I knew about the Quran simply is not true. Is it really your book? O oh Allah, have mercy on me. Who are you? At Tahayatulillahi, was Salawatu Watayyabatu. As Salamu Alaika Ayuha and Nabiyu Wa Ramatullahi Wa Barakata. As Salamu Alaina Wa Allah Ibadi Lahi Salihan. All compliments, prayers, and good things are due to Allah. Allah's peace be upon you, O Prophet, and His mercy and blessings. Peace be on us and on all righteous servants of Allah. I praise you, Allah. All homage is certainly due to you. But there is so much I do not understand. Why am I speaking to Muhammad in my prayer? He cannot hear me. He is dead. I should not be praying to any man, even if it is the Prophet. And why am I wishing peace upon him? I am not his intercessor. I know these words were first recited when he was alive, but why does your greatest prophet need anyone to pray peace over him? Could you not have given him assurance and peace? If he cannot have peace and assurance as the prophet, what hope is there for me? Following the traditions of the Prophet and the guidance of my parents, I pointed my forefinger skyward while reciting the proclamation. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasulullah. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. O oh Allah, have mercy on me. How can I bear witness that Muhammad is your messenger? It used to be so easy. Am I taught me to love Muhammad because he was the greatest man who ever lived, and there was no close second? She taught me that his generosity was abundant, his mercy was incomparable, and his love for mankind was beyond measure. 
I was taught that he would never wage war unless he was defending the Ummah's six and that he fought to elevate the status of women and the downtrodden. He was the perfect military leader, he was the ultimate statesman, and he was the exemplary follower of Allah. He was Alansan al Kamal, the perfect man. He was Ramadalil Alameen, God's mercy personified for all the world. It was easy to bear witness that such a man is Rasul Allah, the Messenger of God. But now I know the truth about him, and there's too much to sweep under the rug. I know about his first revelation, his raids on caravans, his child bride, his marriage to Zainab, the black magic cast upon him, his poisoning, his assassinations, his tortures, and my thoughts slowed as they arrived at the one issue that I simply could not overlook. And how could Muhammad, my beloved prophet, have allowed that? A wash in empathy, my mind drifted from the prayers. I was still grappling with what I had come across while investigating the Quran. How could he? I envisioned the horror from the vantage point of the victims. What if that had been my family? Where was the Prophet's famed mercy? I imagined that I was there, under the red sky of the desert, at that very moment. Anger quickly swelled within me as I surveyed the ruins of my people. Blood and death. A few young soldiers hungrily made their way through the corpses and approached Muhammad. They made their barbarous desires known and asked Muhammad for his guidance. Muhammad's face flushed and began perspiring. He was receiving revelation from Allah.7 when he announced it to his soldiers, an evil glee spread across their faces. They disappeared into their tents, eager to proceed. Allah had sanctioned their activities. For a moment, all lay calm. Suddenly, an unbearable noise pierced the desert sky and my soul. It was my mother, screaming. My eyes shot open as I snapped back to reality. I was still in the mosque, still praying the Salat. My overwhelming revulsion toward Muhammad suddenly met with immediate contrition. I had been impudent before Allah. Muhammad was still my prophet. I still swore allegiance to him. I had gone too far. How could I continue like this? A stack fire lap point a. Quickly, I finished the rest of the ritual prayers ending by turning my head to the right and the left. Assalamu alaikum wa ramudala. The peace and mercy of Allah be upon you. After a pause, I let my face fall into my hands. Tears blurred my sight. The ritual prayers had ended, and now it was time for my heart's prayer. God, I want your peace. Please have mercy on me and give me the peace of knowing you. I don't know who you are anymore, but I know that you are all that matters. You created this world, you give it meaning, and either you define its purpose or it has none. Please, God Almighty, tell me who you are. I beseech you and only you. Only you can rescue me. At your feet. I lay down everything I have learned, and I give my entire life to you. Take away what you will, be it my joy, my friends, my family, or even my life. But let me have you, O oh God. Light the path that I must walk I don't care how many hurdles are in the way, how many pits I must jump over or climb out of, or how many thorns I must step through. Guide me on the right path. If it is Islam, show me how it is true. If it is Christianity, give me eyes to see. Just show me which path is yours, dear God, so I can walk it. 
although I did not know it, that peace and mercy of God which I desperately asked for would soon fall upon me. He was about to give me supernatural guidance through dreams and visions, forever changing my heart and the course of my life.